when it comes to schemes for making money, and I said schemes, not scams, because this is legal, it's very hard to beat the insurance industry. One of the reasons is the extremely wide range of things that can be insured. You can get a policy on almost everything. And the concept of insurance has its appeal. It's a hedge bet. If you lose everything, you won't lose everything. Really, it's a fantastic proposition. When it comes to life insurance, there is term and whole life, and probably a few other slants, and the key there is that right away, you're engaging people in a deal they most likely do not understand. And when I say engaging them, I mean you're taking their money. When it comes to taking people's money, insurance is a beautiful thing. And just about everybody has some form of insurance, so it's a gigantic industry. The top insurance companies are money-making machines. Think of a big building with hundreds of cubicles and busy bees in those cubicles working the phones, bringing in that honey, and the honey is stored and precious little flows back out. That's insurance. I was thinking about this and I wondered how many life insurance policies go unclaimed. Because if the people who are buying them do not fully understand them, what about the benefactors? In many cases, they might not even know the policy exists. And if they do know it exists, they don't know what to do about it, who to contact, what to say, what they should be expecting. The more I thought about this, the more certain I became that there are a lot of unclaimed life insurance policies. But how much exactly is a lot? I decided to Google it. Google would know. So I googled unclaimed life insurance policies, and as usual, I got tons of hits on the subject. I read quite a few reports. Some said that it's estimated, they didn't say how, that one quarter of all life insurance policies go unclaimed. Others put the number at one third, and some had it at a half. No one said how they arrived at their figure. So you run straight into the problem of believing what you read on the internet. And my way of solving that is to come up with a number of my own, using my own mysterious divination process. I was sorely tempted to say 90%, and it would not shock me if that was true, but I finally decided to rake it back a bit, and I came in at 75% of all life insurance policies go uncollected. You can now see more clearly, as the thick clouds part, the majesty of the insurance business. They're sitting on billions of dollars of other people's money, and there's nothing illegal about it. They say that it's difficult to trace the people who own the money because they've moved or changed their name or gotten married or a variety of things that are, of course, total bullshit. The truth is that the insurance companies don't lift a finger to find these people because why would they? This is a windfall of incredible proportions, and they never say a word about it. They just keep selling these policies and then sit on them when the people die. The bees, the honey, you remember. It doesn't seem possible, but it gets better. Much better, in fact. Insurance companies came up with the brilliant idea of doing something called demutualizing, which means that they go from being a company which is wholly owned and supported by its policyholders to being a publicly owned corporation with stockholders. When they make this transition, a company is supposed to offer each policyholder a certain amount of stock, depending on the size of their policy or the number of policies they hold. But the companies say they can't find all the policyholders, so they are simply left out of the deal. And once again, <coughs> excuse me, it's perfectly legal. What does that mean? When John Hancock demutualized, it reported that it was unable to find 400,000 policyholders. I wonder how hard they looked. Prudential Insurance lost 1.2 million policyholders, and MetLife simply said that billions of dollars in stock and cash arising from demutualization went unclaimed. What happens to all that money? I got two answers, and I don't know how correct either one may be. 
One was that the insurance company kept the money in a trust fund. I find the use of the word trust there to be especially deceptive. The other said that money is remitted to custodians of a government trust account, which amounted in one year to $22.8 billion. From that, I got two chuckles, not only the trust, but also the custodians. My gosh, I've always admired the life insurance business as a means of separating people from their money. But now, I must say that I view them with absolute stupefaction. These guys are so far ahead of the curve, they've lost contact with the rest of humanity. They're playing a game that thieves would dream about. Crime doesn't pay. Insurance does.